High stakes behind the scenes this weekend in the state Senate, all ahead of the final floor period next week. A proposal that's meant to preserve local control and limit competition over the construction of new power lines is facing fierce opposition in the state Senate. The bill passed the assembly on a voice vote. It's become known as the right of first refusal and would give current owners of transmission lines in Wisconsin just that. The right to refuse the building of new transmission lines that would connect to their existing infrastructure. The bill has brought immense lobbying to the Capitol on all sides, including from American Transmission Company, which owns and operates some of the state's current system. Ellen Nowak is Vice President and Regulatory of Government Affairs for ATC. She served as the Department of Administration Secretary during the Walker administration and also on the Public Service Commission. Ellen joins us now. Ellen, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate uh, it. ATC ha has immense interest in, in this passing. There's been a ton of lobbying on this, as we just mentioned. Bring back the curtain for a second. Why should people sitting at home care about this? Well, this bill helps maintain local control over who is going to own and operate those high voltage transmission lines in Wisconsin. And so you, you in, in your introduction, you mentioned it limits competition. It actually requires competition. So it requires us to bid every part of the project out. And, and that's very transparent and filed with the Public Service Commission. And what this is also going to do is help ensure lower rates because if an incumbent provider is able to build, own, and operate that, we can spread more costs the way these, these costs are shared in our 15 state region that Wisconsin participates in for uh, transmission. Is that a misconception you think on the competition? Opponents will say this will essentially eliminate all competition. I do. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a big misnomer because, again, we are required, like we always have, we bid out the materials and labor and supplies for every transmission project that we do, and that is publicly filed at the Public Service Commission for others to look at, and it's audited by the PSC staff. What this bill does was opt us out of a federal process that they've called competition, but I call it a very long, protracted federal bureaucratic process. The best example I can use is, let's say you and your wife need to get your house painted. You go out and you get three bids typically, right? And you're going to look at the bids and you guys select the bids. Under this scenario, if we don't pass this bill, Wisconsin wouldn't be able to pick those bids. We wouldn't be able to look at the bids. We wouldn't pick the winning bidder. We would outsource that to a, a subset of the federal government and let them pick who wins and then they tell us who's coming here to own and operate that part of the grid. And I think that's a dangerous thing for Wisconsin from when it comes to reliability, because we need to know and maintain local control who's building and owning an, our critical infrastructure. A smaller chance perhaps that ATC would win those bids as well? Oh, sure. I mean, we, yeah. we, we feel that we can do that, but what we've seen um, in the area, this, this rule that the federal government passed about 12 years ago, um, we've seen it play out. We have the facts now. Senator LeMahieu, the Senate Majority Leader who supports this bill, was here on Upfront mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago. I want to play some of his comments for sure. you to listen to. Thanks. You've said this is one of your major priorities this session. Is it going to get to a floor vote on the Senate? Do you have the votes? You know, we're still working on it. What's the biggest concern from them who aren't there yet? Right. You know, some of them are, are concerned about the competitiveness. They want to competitively bid. So again, Republicans are split on this. You just heard those comments there about that concern that this will stifle competition. I know that you said that this actually encourages competition. So how are you having those conversations with, with those lawmakers to, to impress that point? Yeah, it's just a lot of beating one-on-one, -on -one, telling them actually what the bill does and showing them and telling them about our process. Can you guarantee that the bill does not actually stifle that competition? It's written in the bill that we have to competitively bid these projects. So we, we are requiring it. That's a change we made from last session. Like I said, it's a practice we've always done, but it's not stifling competition. What it is is stifling development. What senators are, are you specifically working with in these final days? Oh, there's, there's it, you know, it kind of changes on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, what I'm really proud of is the fact that we have a lot of bipartisan support for this bill. And we have 15 chambers, low, um, economic development and business chambers, and we have labor groups in favor of it. In this day and age, it's a nice bipartisan bill, which unfortunately we don't see a lot in Madison or Washington, D.C., and I'm really proud of that. I was going to say, if this gets to the floor, you anticipate Demo some Democrats We do, voting yeah, for and this. again, I'm, you know, I'm proud of that because this is a good bill for Wisconsin. It's not a good bill for Republican or Democrats. It's good for ratepayers. You obviously hope that this makes it to the governor's desk. Uh, if it does make it to his desk, do you think that the governor would sign it? You know, I'm the last person that should probably sit here and speak for the governor, but we've had really great conversations with him about it. Republican and Democrat governors around the country have signed this. Um, I know we have, like I said, we've had great conversations with his staff about it, and we're, we 
we feel good. It's an odd mix of people who support this and people who oppose this. It's not party line. It's not a typical necessarily right. political bill. Right. Americans for Prosperity has lobbied hard against this. Right. They said in their testimony that Wisconsinites will see rate hikes on those who can least afford it and rate hikes will make our manufacturing and business sector less competitive nationally and internationally. Uh, are they wrong? They are wrong. It's just not true. It hasn't borne out that way. And, um, you know, again, we submitted testimony showing that under the way the costs are shared among the region, um, an incumbent provider like ATC or Excel or Dairyland, we can actually save ratepayers more dollars. That's been unrefuted. And I would also say in all the states where this legislation is already law and it's been law for quite a while, um, it's still on the books. And there's a reason because the threats and the fears that the opponents of this bill have talked about haven't played out. One of the final high-profile bills making it, it to the Senate floor. Ellen Nowak, Vice President of Regulatory and Government Affairs for ATC. Thank you so thanks, much for your thanks time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Up next, the electric charge, the push to free up tens of millions of dollars to build a new network of electric charging stations statewide.